Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my favorite bias collections usually. Um, today I would like to tell you about the best theorem ever, uh, which is maybe not the best theorem ever, it's still very nice, uh, but it was just puzzled together from the names of the people who discovered it, like down here, and it was somehow really puzzled together, so there are actually two papers by those two authors and uh, one that predates them by Smith and Tutt. Uh, and then just kind of puzzle together because, well, best sounds, sounds good, right? It can't be better. It's the best theorem ever. Anyway, let's have a look at the theorem. It's still very nice. It's certainly not the best or whatever the best means. Whatever, I know it's, it's still very nice. So we'll have a look and uh, you can decide for yourself whether it's really the best theorem or not. Okay, the idea is very old and uh, the story is very old. So it's one of the most, uh, well-known stories in the history of mathematics, I guess. It's this problem of Euler and the Königsberg, so the seven bridges of Königsberg, which you can't do today anymore because uh, the so seven bridges, as far as I know, don't exist, or at least not anymore, at least not all of them. Um, anyway, so the problem was kind of, well, there were seven bridges in Königsberg, and people asked for what today would be called an Euler cycle. Uh, so he wanted to go around and pass each bridge exactly once, okay? So um, so Euler then simplified the problem to um, just a graph. So you just put a, a vertex for each, uh, well, what is it? Um, for each land mass here and an edge for each bridge, whatever, like something like this and so on. And you end up with a graph. Um, and if I'm not messing up here completely, it should be the graph on the right. And then it's kind of a problem in graph theory uh, Euler did that before graph theory was really known. I mean, Euler graph theory came really about in the 50s or 60s of the last century. It's a pretty brilliant idea. And there's a really, really easy criterion to check whether a, a, any given graph has an, such an Euler cycle, uh, right? So an Euler cycle is just a tour that visits every edge once. Um, if you want to puzzle a little bit whether you can find some here, well, you can't. You can find an Euler tour um, in the sense that you can start and end at a different vertex. Um, we will see that later. So cycle and two are slightly different, but it actually doesn't matter for this video. Well, it actually does. So keep it in mind, whatever. Um, so just, we want to visit every edge once. Um, here you can already see that it kind of doesn't work. So you need to go here, something like this, something like this. You need to go back and then you're somehow stuck. Uh, you can't go back anymore. And that's a very, very easy criterion, very well known, which you don't need today to decide whether a graph is Eulerian, so Eulerian is a property you would give to those graphs. And in this case, it's just super easy to read off that it's not. And the brilliance, of course, of this idea of Euler, or maybe not of course, but the brilliance here was that kind of Euler simplified the problem. So instead of walking around in Königsberg and try to <laughs> find a path of all seven bridges, you just sit down, write down a graph which is really, really brilliant. It was kind of one of the first graphs in, in uh, mathematics and life altogether. Um, and then just decide abstractly that it's impossible and actually find a criterion that works for any graph. Okay, so it's kind of very, very classical question. It opened new fields of mathematics, including graph theory, of course, and some topology as well, and many more. Uh, but that's not quite what I want. I would like to ask a different question. As I said, to decide whether a graph has a Eulerian cycle, that's really easy. But I, what I want to do is just to count all of them. So just count all cycles, right? So just a uh, counting problem. Turns out that that is very hard or very easy, depends a bit uh, on the underlying problem. So let's be make the problem more complicated, but actually I simplify it and we'll see later why. So instead of looking at this kind of type of Euler problem, which is an undirected graph, I would like to look at the directed version. So I have a directed graph, like my bow tie graph here, and I would ask the same question, um, try to find some Euler cycle. So here's my Euler cycle for this bow tie. I mean, it's, it's very simple in this case. So you just go this edge, then this edge, then this edge, then this edge, then this edge, and then this edge. And um, as you can see, in this case, there would be uh, two cycles. So you can either go this one first, or you could decide to go this one first, um, and then, then you're kind of fixed. Uh, so there are four actually, my, my bad. So you can decide for each one, which one to go first. So you have two choices here. You have two choices here, so you have four choices in total, um, but all of them look the same. 
Um, and then you would like to count all of them and the overall vertices. In this case, I just counted the one for the middle vertex. Um, turns out, as I said, that directed tours, so the directed version is actually easier, which is not obvious at all why it should be easier, but it will be. I will solve that in this video while I definitely won't solve the undirected version. But the task stays the same. I just want to count all cycles um, for all vertices. And it's a, it's a big counting problem. It's not quite clear why this should work, actually. And as I said, we will see in the undirected version, it's actually so much harder that it's really, really not clear how that should work. And the best theorem is kind of the undirected, the directed version of this question. OK, so this is a graph. Um, and for a general graph, so here's an example of an Euler tour in a directed graph illustrated as a knot. Really beautiful picture that I stole from theorem of the day linked in the description. And we'll see the graph in a second in a slightly nicer form. But basically, you could think of an Euler tour as being kind of, kind of a knot in the graph. And for bigger graphs, it's, it's again, even in the directed setup, it's really, really easy to decide whether a, a graph has a Euler cycle or not. But counting them is absolutely not trivial. So in this case, I, I claim we have 16 of them. I will do the calculation in a second. And I knew that without ever counting, because the best theorem tells us a formula and a really, really simple and beautiful and really, really uh, applicable formula, which shows that the problem isn't all that hard, although it looks pretty terrifying. Like, try to count all possible cycles and kind of brute force. You would need to start at every vertex and try to go all the paths. Well, that will take some time. <laughs> for this graph, for example, that has seven vertices, it would actually already take some time. Uh, that's not what I did. I just feed it in the numbers in the formula, and it took about um, five minutes, maybe. Actually, probably not five minutes. It took about 20 seconds or so, but I miscalculated several times. So let's just say it took five minutes, which is still much better than just uh, doing it by brute force. Um, so here's the graph again. Maybe it's now a bit easier to see. And I will explain the pictures in a second. But first, let's look at the theorem itself. So this is the best theorem, <laughs> named after the people from before. So if you want to count those numbers, um, it's pretty easy. There's a closed formula and a very simple closed formula. It's just a certain number TA, which I'm going to explain in a second, and a product of the, well, factorials of the degrees of the vertices. So the degree of a vertex is really, really easy. It's just the number of in or outgoing edges. Um, in an Eulerian graph, in is the same as out. That's kind of the criteria here anyway. So we can count either of them. For example, for A here, you have, well, let's count in going, uh, incoming. This comes in, this comes in, this comes in. So the degree for A would be 3. And I actually haven't miscalculated. The degree for B apparently is also 3. The degree for D is 3. C, E, F, and G have 2. Okay, And you just take, take the product over all of them just with a factorial, and you subtract 1. So here you would take uh, 4 times 1 factorial. 1 factorial is not so interesting. It's just 1. And you would take 3 times. Uh, so, so you take uh, 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Uh, so that's 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. So we already get 2 times two times two from the formula. And now let me explain the TA. In our case, it's also two. So in the end, we get two times two times whatever, 16, uh, the, the number that I claimed before. So what is TA? TA is the number of spanning trees directed towards my fixed vertex A. So I kind of bias everything towards one vertex. Um, you could take any vertex. So a kind of fun fact, so TA would be TB, would be TC, and so on. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, and this picture is just TA. So this is the number of spanning trees directed towards A. So there are two of them. Um, here you can see those spanning trees, and they're directed towards A. Very easy to compute. I won't explain how, but it's, it's really, really simple to compute those. And of course, and maybe not of course, but it's, it's very easy to convince yourself that counting degrees is really not hard. And then taking product over all of them is, again, really not hard. So this whole formula is really, really simple. You just count the degrees, trivial. It's almost a trivial problem. And you count the number of those spanning trees, where, which can be done using a very effective algorithm. And just take the product of all of them, and that's the number of well, cycles in, of course, a connected Eulerian graph. So connected, sure, if you have multiple components, you just do it per component. This is pretty cool, actually. Right? It's, it solves the problem in a very elegant way. It has a very small and efficient formula. It's very easy to compute. And instead of brute force looking for all those graphs, uh, paths, it's just 
count vert count degrees of vertices basically, which is pretty cool and really surprising because turns out so here's by the way in, in, in not an Euler cycle but an Euler tour. So I, I, I don't start and don't end at the same vertex um, for the, the Königsberg problem. Anyway, so the Königsberg problem was undirected and the best theorem is about directed graphs. And it turns out that there's a huge difference between the two cases. So very, very surprisingly, well, the directed version is pretty easy. There's a closed formula, which you can compute easily. So it's easy by this best formula. The best formula is still not trivial, right? non-trivial formula, it's pretty nice. Um, you can now decide yourself whether it's the best theorem ever or not. But anyway, um, but the number, in the same numbers, the same counting in undirected graphs is known to be very hard. I don't want to go into details. There's a certain complexity class and those complexity classes, uh, it's, it's called sharp P. Um, so it's, it's very, very hard compared to uh, the best theorem. Okay. So let me wrap up. The best theorem, again, you can decide now whether it's really the best theorem ever or not. Um, I certainly think it, it fits on this list because I personally find it very surprising that it is so simple. The formula itself is really, really simple. And as I said, I find that already surprising, but if you compare it to the undirected case where no similar formula is known and the problem is known to be hard in a certain very, uh, very explicit sense, a very specific sense, I think that's very surprising that you can write down a very easy formula where you basically count degrees of vertices. That's why it ended on the list. As I said, you can decide for yourself whether it's really the best theorem ever, uh, but it's kind of a fun pun just playing with the names of those authors. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the best theorem. I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.